Hi, I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. We're going to learn how to make the dynamic squares throw in this four-part video series. This is a free pattern and you can find the link in the video description. This throw uses geometric patterns to add a modern twist to a generic square throw. Let's have some fun and make this great pattern together. dynamic squares throw, I'm going to show you how to make the large square. Let's get started. We're going to begin with the large square of the dynamic square throw. You need to make six of these total. Let's jump right on in. You're going to begin with a slip knot on your hook. You put the tail of the yarn into the palm of your hand, wrap the working yarn around your forefinger and middle finger, and when you come back up, cross over. If you turn your hand, take your other hand, go underneath the front one, grab the back one, and off you have a slip knot. Place that slip knot directly onto your hook. And we're going to begin with a chain four. So we're going to go ahead and do our chain four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do a slip stitch into the very first chain we worked to join these chains to create a ring. If I stick my fingernail right through there, that's the ring. We have created this ring. We're going to begin working into that. So we're going to start off with the chain three. And then we're going to go ahead and mark the third chain that we just created because this chain three counts as a double crochet, okay? So I'm marking that third chain because that lets me know that when we come all the way around, that's actually where I'm going to join my work. I go ahead and I do two double crochets all into this ring. So I'm going to do two double crochets. Now here comes the repeat. Everything I'm going to do in this next section, I have to do that three times total. So I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to put three double crochets all into this ring. Now I have to do the repeat. So I chain two, and then three double crochets. You'll notice that the ring itself will start to get a little bit wider. It's actually not really getting wider, it just looks like it is because you're starting to fill in the space with stitches. One last time, chain two and put my three double crochets in. If for some reason your double crochets start to creep up on the beginning before you get all of them in there, you can always just scoot them because you're actually working around those original chains. You're not working into any you know, actual chains, so they move. You finish off this round with a chain two, and you join with a slip stitch to that marked chain right there. So see how important it is that you mark it? It makes it super easy. I'm gonna take the marker out so I can go directly into it and join with my slip stitch. You've created four corners now to begin the square. Let's go ahead and jump into round two. For round two, you start off with a slip stitch into the next double crochet of that same round you just finished. What you're doing is you're moving your hook over into position to create the next round. We go ahead, we chain three stitches, one, two, three, and remember the third chain of this is where we're going to be joining our work, so I'm putting my marker into that third chain. This is, can, this is the same now and throughout the entire pattern. Those chain threes count as a double crochet. The next part of the instructions say we're going to do a front post double crochet. Now I'm going to walk you through how to do this. It's a simple double crochet, only we're going to go around the post of the next stitch, meaning instead of working into these two top legs of the stitch, we're going to come all the way down here and going from right to left around that whole post, we put our hook there, now we yarn over, and we have our hook go back that same path. So we go from the back to the front. We have our three loops on our hook, just like we normally do when we double crochet. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. We go ahead and into this chain two space, we're going to do two double crochets. Chain two, oops, that was one double crochet. One and two. Chain two 
and then two double crochets. Once again, you'll notice I'm putting them all into the space of that chain two section. I don't want to work any stitches into an actual chains. I carry on and I'm going to do a front post double crochet again around the next double crochet. So I yarn over my hook, go in from right around the back to the left side of that stitch. See how my hook's around the post? Yarn over and then have my hook go that same path. So I'm going to the back, coming back around. I have three loops on my hook. Yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. The next stitch is a double crochet. So I'm going to just put a basic double crochet into the next stitch, and I'm going to do another front post double crochet. Yarn over my hook, go into the stitch, go around the stitch, I should say, around the post. Yarn over, have my hook go back that same path, and finish my double crochet. We're going to go ahead and carry on putting our two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets in the corner, and doing our front post double crochet, double crochet, front post double crochet around the double crochets of the previous row. So I'm going to go ahead and put my two double crochets right here in the next chain two space of the corner. Chain two, two double crochets, and I finish that corner. So I carry on, I'm going to do my front post into the next double crochet, my regular double crochet into the next one, and then a front post. I'm on the last corner here, so I'm putting two double crochets, and I'm gonna do my chain two, and then two double crochets. I want you to see where I am here. Remember, we still have this one double crochet right here to finish. That was our original chain three from the previous round. So I'm going to yarn over my hook and do my post stitch just like we did before. And then I join with a slip stitch to that marked stitch right there. After I do that, I'm going to finish off my work because it's time to change colors. So I'm going to yarn over my hook and pull through a loop. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn, making sure I leave a nice long tail. Because when you have to weave in all of these colors or all of these tails when you're doing color work, you want to make sure you leave a nice long tail so that they don't come out later on, okay? Once you cut it, go ahead and pull the tail nice and snug, and we're ready to begin round three. Let's go ahead and begin round three, and we're changing colors this time. I want to make sure that my square has the right side facing me, and I'm going to join my new color with a slip stitch into any of the chain two spaces, which is the corner. So I'm just going to pick up my work and I'm going to put my hook into a chain two space. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through the loop on my hook, and I've joined with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chain three, which counts as my double crochet, remember? So I'm going to go ahead and take this moment to mark it with my stitch marker so I know where I'm going to end this round. And I do a double crochet here in the corner. chain two, and then two more double crochet. Sound familiar? <laughs> What's really great is as you start going along with this square, it's just a big repeat, so it's really easy. Once I've done that, I go ahead and jump into my pattern, which is a front post double crochet around this stitch down there. So I'm going to do my front post double crochet, a double crochet in the next stitch, and then a front post double crochet, which you will notice is right on top of the previous front post double crochet from the row below. So if you work it just the same way, I'm going from right to left, yarning over, going back that same path and back, and then yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Do my double crochet over here. Another front post double crochet, which is right on top of the one from the previous row. A double, and again, I finish with a front post double crochet. At this point, I'm at the corner, which means I do my corner repeat, which is two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Then I carry on alternating the front post double crochet and the double crochet for this entire round. 
What's really awesome is for round five and six, you'll change colors again, but it's just this exact same round. For seven and eight, you change colors again, and it's this exact same round. So you already know how to make this entire square. You just change colors every two rounds. When it's complete, it's gonna look like this. Okay, I'm gonna pull this in, and you can see here that all of the post stitches are all stacked on top of each other. So if you're going along and all of a sudden you have a random post stitch in the wrong place, you're gonna know immediately because it's going to be really visible that it's in the wrong place because they're not all lined up on each other, correct? You're gonna always have the corners at two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and it's just gonna look really nice and lovely like this. As it pulls in a little bit because of the post stitches, that's okay. When you go to seam it all together, it will even it out nice and neat. Now that you know how to do the large square, it's time to learn the small square. You're all done. You made the large square and it's time to learn how to do the small square. Hang around and I'll show you how to do that next. Mm -hmm.